Leo! 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 Colombia Egypt's contract! How much? First government contract to support research in the uranium carbon experiment in which a chain reaction would sustain itself. How much? One hundred thousand. One hundred thousand dollars? For pure uranium metal and pure graphite for the intermediate experiment. Well, we get more material for egg boiling at the pile. Of course. We need stronger bats to transport the graphite. The dean suggested university footballers. Huh? No, American footballers. Oh. He says it's time they contributed something useful to the university. Mm -hmm. Colombia will be the first to beat the Germans. And the Italians. Not to mention the Berkeley Cyclotron. This says that the president will support us. Full effort toward creating atomic bombs is essential to the safety of the nation and of the free world. If atomic bombs can be made, we must make them first. We have to separate much more uranium-235 from the tube alloy. And we'll need more than minute quantities of plutonium. The government also wants theoretical studies at Chicago. Of course. Electromagnetic separation out at Berkeley. Yes. Engineering studies through Standard Oil. Standard Oil. Diffusers through Chrysler. Chrysler. And up in Hanford, DuPont will make a DuPont? No, 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 no. This will not work. What now? I refuse to work with them. You enlist me and now you refuse to work against the Nazis? I refuse to work with these money changers hand in hand. Government decides now, Leo, it's out of our hands. How can they expect us to work with war profiteers? Cooperatively. Instead of working along democratic lines, corporations will insist on being authoritative. Don't you mean authoritarian, Leo? I suppose. Well, your accent is very good, but your vocabulary needs some work. <laughs> well, now, take control of everything. We must think ahead. Do anything to make a profit. Consider the practice of they always know exactly there how to work forward. But this is a system. complete hey! outrage. Czechoslovakia invaded. Monrovia occupied. Slovakia protected. Your Hungary in ashes. What will I do with DuPont? Make nylon stockings? No, Leo. Plutonium. Pluto. God of the underworld. God of wealth. God of the dead. Graphite. 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 principles at first sight with elementary notions of causality do in fact suggest lead lead Dick! 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 They want to fund my idea! Who's they? I'm not supposed to say who. Okay, what's your idea? I'm not supposed to say what? Oh, why do they want to fund it? I'm not supposed to say why. How come? I'm not supposed to say how. What are you talking about, Bob? It's a secret. I'm not supposed to tell anyone, but I have yeah, to tell no somebody. somebody. Why me? I need you. As soon as you know what's going on, you'll have to join us. To do what, precisely? Theoretically, there are two different ways to create a chain reaction, right? They're trying one up at Columbia. Right, the, uh, the Pope's in charge. Fermi, Italian, infallible. Here's my idea. Instead of slowing down the neutrons so the uranium-235 captures them, we separate the uranium-235 from the uranium-238 using my isotron. Enough 235 might constitute a critical mass to, to make, make a, a bomb. bomb. You know. Well, if it can be done, we should do it first, not the Germans and Heisenberg. They want to fund your idea? They're recruiting at Chicago, Berkeley, MIT, Illinois, here. You ought to come to the meeting. I don't want to do it. Seaboard says no matter what you do with the rest of your life, nothing will be as important as your work on this project right now. Dick, the war has come to campus even if it hasn't been declared by the rest of the world yet. I don't want to do it. I'm writing my dissertation. I had plenty of war work in Philadelphia last summer, and my sweet girl's in the hospital. What did they say this time? <clears throat> say indeed. Doctors never know. They have no business calling themselves scientists. They ruled out typhoid? Now they're looking at Hodgkin's disease, or lymphoma, or lymphosarcoma. Lord have mercy. What are you going to do? Get married. <laughs> Congratulations. Thanks. Arlene's a wonderful girl. I think so, too. My mother's beside herself. Cheapers. You have no idea what hardships lie ahead. Blah, blah, blah. Mothers. Yeah. 
I can't believe someone my age is getting married. Yeah. You want to hear my special plan? This is very interesting to me, that I've noticed two people clearly in love sometimes end up fighting and arguing once they've married. Very perceptive of you. If Arlene and I disagree on something intensely, here's what we'll do. Discuss it at a later time. Within an hour, reason will win out, therefore no more arguments. Q.E.D. And when you can't resolve the differences after an hour? We calmly, logically, agree to let one of us decide. Who? It should be the older, more experienced one. That would be me. Are you talking about Arlene Greenbaum? You'd make a lot more sense if you tagged along with me. I'm trying to write my dissertation. So you see, Bob, that's why I won't be at this meeting of yours. OK, but it starts at 3 o'clock. Bob. I'll see you there. Bob, it's all right that you told me a secret, because I'm not going to tell anybody, but I'm not going to do it. These principles Oh hell. Bob! Bob, wait up! By four o'clock I had taken a desk and was calculating the total current you could get from an ion beam and so on. Ion beam? I'll save you the details, but I was working as hard and as fast as I could so the boys building the apparatus could do it right there at Princeton, okay? All the boys decided to work on this and stop their research in science. All science stopped during the war, except for the little bit that was done at Los Alamos. <laughs> that was mainly engineering. Pearl Harbor, a day that still lives in infamy. Dear Professor, Stop. We need your help. Stop. Arrive Wednesday to consolidate organization in Chicago. Arthur Compton. Why Columbia can't be the center? We tried. Not hard enough. Everyone wanted their I mean, They have told them how hard it would be to move 40 tons of graphite. Good for Leo. I up say work should not be spread out during the war. One wanted Princeton. We praised Columbia. Then Arthur said if you come to Chicago will have it by year's end, and they decided he was right. Chicago is Wild West Al Capone. Shh, Chicago is Midwest. Central, convenient travel. Hey, also part of Compton's argument. First our homeland at war, now our new home joins in. American neighbors battling Italian cousins. I turn off radio at news time. I zigzag around newsstands walking children to school. Julio asks, are we fascists, mommy? Nella, taunted as enemy alien. Enrico, please, something safe and secure for our lives. New York was supposed to be our home. You promised, no? One last move, Laura, truly, <coughs> for my work, for the science. If the experiment sustains theory, America must do it first. We live in Chicago temporarily. How long can a war last? Thirty years. Laura. Or until all East Coast physicists move west, and all West move east. No one can know where I'm going or why. Say I go on lecture tour. You reach me at the University of Chicago Met Lab, eh? Metropolitan Lab? Metallurgical. They turn a Nobel scientist into an engineer? Depends on the metal. Find us a nice Chicago apartment, Pato. Of course. When Julio and Nella finish school, we join you. Certainly. Take the money. No, not our emergency fund. Yes, no one must freeze these enemy assets. Take them with you to Chicago. From Alfred Nobel's hands and guilty conscience to yours. <coughs> Dynamite. Chicago Bears make every play lead the way to victory. Bear down, Chicago Bears. Put up a fight with the might so fearlessly. We'll never forget the way you thrilled the nation with your T formation. Bear down, Chicago Bears. Let them know why you're wearing the crown. You're the pride and joy of Illinois, Chicago Bears, bear down! University of Chicago Metallurgical Lab, 
Herbert L. Anderson. Columbia University. Brigadier General Leslie R. Grove. West Point. John A. Wheeler. My dissertation advisor. Robert Sever. University of Illinois. Klaus Fuchs. German. Gregory Bright. Russian. Edward Teller. Hungarian. Leo Silov. Uh, still Hungarian. James Frank. German, Nobel 1925. Harold Yuri. Columbia, Nobel 1934. Enrico Fermi. You remember him, right? Nobel 1938. Ernest O. Lawrence. Berkeley, uh, Nobel 1939. Glenn Seaborg. Berkeley again, co discover of plutonium, Nobel Prize 1951. Felix Bloch. Swiss, Nobel 1952. Emilio Segre. Italian, Fermi's oldest friend, Nobel 1959. Eugene Wigner. Hungarian, Nobel 1963. Hans Beta. German, Nobel 1967. Arthur H. Compton. Chicago, Nobel 1927, director of metallurgical lab. J. Robert Oppenheimer. Ethical culture school, <laughs> my mom went there. Harvard, Gotigan, and Berkeley. My mom didn't go there, and I didn't go to Chicago, okay? Wait, wait, wait! You sound perturbed on the phone. The man in charge of the Met Lab should know, Arthur. Precisely what should I know, Arthur? Our team theorized a new possibility, a device powered by fusion. Fusion of what? Deuterium nuclei. A hydrogen bomb? I never thought of that. Me either. <coughs> its mass can be anything. Its potential is <coughs> limitless. <coughs> Teller calls it super. Says we should work solely on it. He won't work on anything else. If we thought of it, so is Heisenberg. German, Nobel, 1932. Heisenberg was working for Hitler. That much was certain. If it can be done, we should do it first. Calculations make sense? They're still preliminary. It could be 500 times more powerful than fission. How do you generate enough heat to burn the hydrogen? A fission? Boom. At the center of the super. Ooh. Assuming we can make a fission. Assuming. Teller got us thinking. If it's hot enough to explode deuterium, wouldn't it ignite the hydrogen in a nearby pond or stream? Then a nearby chain of lakes. The nearest ocean. God in heaven above. Nitrogen isn't much more stable. Right. So it might set the atmosphere on fire too. We'd be better off ruled by Nazis. than ever, whether it's with me for having this disease, or me for loving you, or you for loving me, I couldn't say. What does our future hold, coach? Please tell me what's in a name. <coughs> Tuberculosis? Professor? Fiance? Arlene, I'm glad to know the truth at long last, aren't you? As I understand it, we're lucky you've got TB. It acts more slowly than the others do, and its outcome is less certain. We have more time now, so we can stop rushing about so frantically. Richard, if it's true that we can stop rushing about so frantically, does that mean that we're not getting married? Because that would kill me too, you know. Even if it made your mother the happiest woman on Long Island. <laughs> 